Hello and welcome back to Arlie Knits. So I have been asked recently to do a tutorial on a little cardigan, a very easy, simple garter stitch cardigan. The cardigan in question is this one over here and it's a really cool, really simple, easy, breezy summer cardigan which I can understand why you'd want to learn to make. So I have chosen to do this particular cardigan in a different color. Um, that green's a little bit intense for my skin tone. That was for a client. This is a, I think it's an amber um, ombre and it's a double knit. It's recommending a US size three and a half to five knitting needle. I've gone for a five. Um, and I'm going to recommend getting a batch of like about five of these. It's pretty unusual that we'll use it all up, but I like to just rather have too much wool than too little and we run out and it's a disaster. Other than that, you can grab yourself a pair of long cord circular needles in the size that you've picked between three and a half and five US. Um, the reason it's circular is not because you're going to be knitting in the round, but because we're going to have a lot of stitches on our needles and we just want some space. On top of that, you can get yourself a pair of regular straight knitting needles in the exact same size. And you will need scissors and a crochet hook. And that's it. To get going, we're going to grab our first ball of wool and our long circular needles. And we will cast on 100 stitches onto our needles. Once you have all 100 stitches on your needles, you can just do a regular garter stitch, which is um, wrong and right side the knit stitch. Okay, so just to give you guys a little idea of how far we are, I'll put a knitting needle for a gauge. That is one ball of wool, which is 100 grams, and that's how much mileage we got out of that. I measure my distance by counting these things here. So I call this, these two little lines together, if you look there, I call that a lump or a bump, either. And at present, we're sitting at 38 lumps lumpy bumps so we're gonna go to 50 and then I'm gonna see how long that is and I'll get back to you then okay so I have knitted out 45 of these little lump bumps like I described earlier and um, this is what it looks like so far it's about this long and I'm very happy with that so I think we're ready to move on to the next phase Right, so next up we're going to grab our straight needles and we're going to knit 50 stitches over onto the straight needles. Alright, so I've got all 50 stitches on my straight needles. The other 50 are just hanging loose on the circular needles. They'll be fine there. And you can now knit out 45 of those lump bumps, which is essentially 90 rows on the straight needles on your 50 stitches. Once you've knitted down your 45 rows, what you can do is take your needle 
come up here, start knitting this first row onto these needles. And then once you've knitted that row and this is loose, knit this, take this needle and knit it back onto this so that this row here will be on these needles. So I'm just literally going to cut this off here. Then we'll come back to these stitches here and we'll just scrunch them back so we don't lose them. Just be careful they don't fall off here. And grab your other needle, stick it in, and the loose end of wool that you just cut off now. Drape that over the needle, hold on to both ends, and just knit it in. Let go of the short one now. And knit it in. Okay, now the second row of 50 stitches on our shorter needles, and we're going to come back to this end here, grab our circular needles. And I'm just going to slide these stitches over. I would have knitted them, but I've actually already cut this, so that's no big deal, though. Okay, so we've now knitted down both of these panels and we've got them on our circular needles like this and it's quite important that you have them in this formation so if you've moved your stitches over if this is not facing this exact shape then just put them back on another pair of needles and swap it over but this it must look like this on your circular needles okay you're then going to fold it over like this and what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with our circular needles and we're going to pick up these stitches and we're going to pop them on here so that all of this is sitting on the circular needles now. like to move over to a smaller needle and we're going to introduce a one by one ribbonet. So in case you missed my tutorial on that, let's knit one stitch, pull one stitch, knit one stitch and then if you want to go into the settings and slow it down, let me show you a pull one more time. You bring the wool forward, stick the needle in from behind, but in front of the needle, wrap the wool in around and pull it over. It's essentially a knit stitch, but a back to front version. And then take the wool back behind the needle again and knit. So we're doing knit pull, knit pull. We're going to go around now. Be careful not to knit past that front area where um, the cardigan is going to join by the belly button. You want to swap over and knit in the opposite direction when you get there. I'll show you what I mean. There's a whole storm in the background, so sorry about any noise. But once you've knitted the waist down and you're happy with how long it is, you can cast that off. Do yourself a favor go and measure it up against you so that you know you are happy. And I am. Right, so it's cast off and our cardi currently looks like this. Little waistband, opens in the front. Um, what I would like to mention now is with the green cardigan, I 
cost on I think much less or I used a smaller pair of needles so with this cardigan I used a size 5 and with the green cardigan I think maybe I used a size 4 or 3 and it's resulted in this being a lot longer which I don't particularly mind but bear that in mind if that's something that would bother you because now this piece is bigger so with the green cardigan I think it came up to about here um, and if that is something that you would like too, then maybe use a three and a half or a four needle. If you don't mind it being a little extra large, which I don't mind, then a size 500 stitches. Okay, so next up we're going to take a crochet hook and we're going to close up here to about there. And then we're going to pick these arm stitches up onto a small pair of circular needles in the same size that we made this one with a short cord. You can just stab your crochet hook in these little lumpy parts here all the way up. Um, the only thing is that you want to make sure that however many you do on the one side you do the exact same number on the other side and that your hole for the arm stitches is the identical size as well. This is very important. So when we go and we pick up the stitches on the arm now at the end of this row, at the end of this line, we're going to make sure that however many stitches we have, we have the exact same number on the other arm. Okay, so we've just gone up here and if I look at this here, this looks like a nice size for an arm. So I've just pulled this out so we don't lose it and I'm going to count how many lumpy bumpies I've got here and if it's an even number we're going to pick it up and if it's not we're going to keep going. So we're just picking up the arm stitches like this, just shoving our needle into these lumpy bumpy bits. So that was one there, this one here, one here. We're going to go around and I've counted that I've got 50 of these so I should pick up 50 stitches on this arm and when I go and I do the other side I must make sure I pick up 50 on that arm too. Okay so one other important thing to mention is once you get all your stitches on your circular needles and you begin knitting round and round and round, very, very first thing is you should have some kind of stitch marker here. Um, holder. You can use a safety pin. I'm going to go grab one now. The second is that because we're knitting in the round you are going to have um, all of the knit stitches on one side and all of the pull stitches on the other side and if you would like to keep the garter pattern what you're going to have to do is one row do a knit stitch and when you come around at the second row you're going to do that whole row pull so <clears throat> you can make a decision now if you want to have your sleeves a garter stitch. If you do, go grab yourself a row counter, do that anyway, a um, row marker. And one row is going to be knit, the next row is going to be pull. Then knit, then pull, knit, pull in that order. Otherwise, you're going to have all knit stitches on the one side and all pull stitches on the other side. So yeah, you can make a decision now. I'm very happy with the length of the sleeve and we're now ready to make a little cuff. So we're going to grab a pair of US size 2 short cord circular needles and the first thing we're going to do is knit all of these stitches over onto our short needles. So this is how we do that. Next up, we're going to begin the decreasing process. So personally, I like to have 40 stitches for a cuff. That's a happy 
um, spot for me but what we're going to do is we're going to knit two stitches and then knit two stitches together so go in, I'll go like this knit one two and then knit two stitches together knit one two and the two together and we're going to go around and do this until we come all the way back to where we started and we're going to count how many stitches we have then we have just come back around and i count 36 stitches on my needles which is good i'm happy with that um i do like 40 it's a nice size for a cuff but 36 is also good so we're going to stick with that and we're going to make a note somewhere that we've got 36 <laughs> 36 stitches here to make sure that when we make the other cuff we also have the exact same number because they have to be identical and now we're going to switch over to a one by one ribbon so when you get to the point where you feel like your cuff is long enough um, you can cast off just do yourself a favor and count exactly how many lines you have you can do that by counting these little horseshoe shapes so there's one two three four etc and you're going to want to have the exact same number on both sides and then you can cast off like i said and do the exact same steps on the other side okay our cardigan is all done this is the final product this is what it looks like i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you all have a really Merry Christmas and I'll see you in the next one.